Okay, I wanted to do a quick video um, on the, the first time set up and the first time use of uh, this Creality CR10. There, there is a couple of videos out there that show unboxings and setups and stuff, but they really gloss over a couple of the areas that I had uh, some questions about, and they don't really go into any detail on how to use it. And being a complete newbie to this. Um, you know, I was really confused. I had no idea what, what to do. And uh, I asked a few really dumb questions on the uh, Creality Facebook page, and the guys there were really helpful to answer my questions. Um, and I got going. You know, a couple of my questions, maybe I could have found the answers to them if I had read through the Chinglish instructions in, in, in enough times. Others, I don't. I still have never found the answers to the questions that I had. Um, in the documentation. So I thought I could save some, some newbies uh, maybe some a lot of time and headache if I just touched on a few of the areas that I had trouble with. So um, just starting with uh, with the actual layout and assembly um, you know there wasn't even any good, the documentation that came with it, the, it came with a couple of instruction sheets that were so faded you couldn't even read them and the pictures on them you couldn't even see what they were showing. So just really basically just showing that as we're standing here looking at the looking at the extruder head um, this is the front that has the little pulley and the back on this axis it has the drive so when you go to put the the gantry the, the Z gantry on you know which way it's supposed to face it's it's facing this way with the extruder facing you it comes with a couple of brackets um, and the one on when you're standing looking at it from the front the one on the right hand side is the plain one and the one on the left hand side has the Z limit switch on it so that's that's a little bit of a help too just knowing which way those go on and those things are retained um, those brackets are retained inside these slots with these little um, T nuts that go in behind the bolts and uh, I wasn't even sure how you were supposed to get those things in and in place. You don't have to do anything with them. If you just loosen the, the, the bolts off and turn them lengthwise, they'll slide into the tracks. And then once they're in there, as you, as you start tightening the bolt, they actually turn 90 degrees so that they're going widthwise inside and, and then they tighten up. So that was... Uh, no, that was just another thing. I the first time I took them all apart, tried to position them all inside, and it was unnecessary. All you have to do is drop them in and, and tighten them up. Um, squaring it itself was uh, they it was fairly square just by bolting the things together. There's a couple of bolts from underneath, um, but I actually had a big machinist square that I used to make sure everything was was really nice and square. Um, my belt. Um, this axis belt was really loose for some reason. I don't know why. I there's screws here and two on the other side. I loosened those and I pulled the the pulley back and and tightened that up a bit. Other than that, um, and one of these things, one of these adjusting the bed adjusting nuts had fallen off inside the box. That seemed to be common on one of the other videos too. Maybe they do it on purpose just to keep you keep you guessing or something. I don't know. Um, so, so that was that. Um, I don't, I don't know whether this is the way it's meant to be put together. This is the way I installed my holder for the, for the PLA. Um, that was fairly simple. Uh, and then the Bowden tube is attached to the extruder when it comes. Um, and then you just, you just push it into the little fitting compression fitting here on on the extruder motor and your PLA goes through the other side um, so then once I fired it up and running okay so there's the control screen um, and you push the button to access and one of the first questions that I had I had gone to to move the, the um, the base plate I guess you call it and I'd gone to move axis I selected 10 millimeters to move and then I noticed there was no Z axis 
So I thought, oh well, I can't, I can't move my z-axis. So that was one of my first questions. Turns out that when you select 10 millimeters, it disables the z-axis. So if you select one millimeter or 0.1 millimeter, now you, your z-axis shows up, and you can. So if you select your z-axis, now you can move your z-axis up and down. So that was one question. Another question: I couldn't get my extruder to to work. I, you know, it didn't, didn't, it just wasn't pushing the PLA through. So another question on the Facebook page answered that the hothead has to be uh, up to temperature before you can move your extruder. So that was another question that you know threw me for a, a bit of a loop. Okay, so then the SD card itself, um, you know, there's there's no SD card shown. Um, oh, and well, before that, one of the other big important things on this control box, it is 220 or 110 volt. So before you do anything, make sure you set it to 110 volt because they all seem to come set at 220. So make sure you do that before you even turn that turn this on. Now with the SD card. With the SD card, there's a tiny, couple of tiny little slots here, uh, one marked SD and one marked for the micro USB. I fought with this for about half an hour before I finally came to the, to, well, one of two conclusions. The, I just couldn't get the stinking card to go in. Uh, it just re absolutely refused to go in. I ended up dropping the card inside the slot two or three times while I was fiddling around with it so so ultimately I had to take it apart I had to take the uh, I had to take the control box all apart and and I had to shift the entire circuit board card towards this side of the control box I, I wasn't able to push the SD card in deep enough to get it to click because the control board was shifted over so once I shifted the control board over now the SD card stuck out a little bit and I could actually do it. The other thing, the SD card goes in upside down, what I would consider upside down anyway. The little SD card, of course, has writing on one side and it's got the, the contacts on the other. So when it's going in, it, it actually goes in contact side up, which will, I don't know, I consider that upside down. So that was a bit of a pain in the ass until I figured that out. Um, the, the bed came completely covered with very wide tape, and, but that tape was all wrinkled. There was, there was a really wide band about like at least six inch or eight inch wide tape and then there was a, a narrower band and the really wide one was really wrinkled. I peeled it all back and smoothed it out as best I could. Um, and I started my first test print which is the cat. Here this is the actual first print that came off the machine. It's absolutely perfect once I once I got things going but you know he, he starts off in the center of, of the bed when he's printing like that. And after, you know, probably, what, 10 minutes I, of, of printing, I noticed that the whole print was stuck to the bottom of the, of the extruder. And, uh, okay, so I, I restarted it again, and I did the same thing again, and I started it a third time, and I did the same thing again. And I'd heard guys say to use, try hairspray. I tried putting hairspray on. That didn't work. So. I peeled off all of that tape and I tried to just run hairspray directly on the glass which is another thing I heard people say I couldn't get that to work. I tried green painters tape which I have under here that didn't work so then ultimately I put green painters tape down and then put the yellow tape that they included with the printer over top and and that worked but what I really think that my main one of my main problem was was that uh, because I had leveled the bed to that original tape that they had on, I don't think that once I peeled all that off, 
I don't think that the uh, I don't think the head was close enough to the bed to get those first layers to stick. So um, so this one I ended up doing with their yellow tape on top of green painters tape. This this part I ended up doing today. Um, same thing with, uh, on on the yellow tape on top of green painters tape, and and I'm gonna try um, I'm gonna try another one pretty soon. Just I'm gonna go back to trying the uh, hairspray right on the glass bed, um, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna re-level the bed to that so that it's a little a little lower.